Patrick Adam Lawson from Wind River Internet, and we're back with another edition of Tech Tips Live. Uh, this week, uh, this month, we're doing them monthly now, uh, we're talking about something that is, is oh so near and dear to my heart. Uh, we're talking about malware. Um, malware comes in all kinds of forms. We're going to learn about them today. Uh, we're also gonna learn what it does to your computer, uh, which is wreak havoc, I, you know, spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, we're gonna learn what it can do to your internet speed, um, which another spoiler alert, wreak havoc. Uh, and um, we're gonna learn ways to remove it. Um, Patrick Adams gonna remove, or remove? He's not gonna <laughs> remove anything today, uh, but he's gonna tell us all about it. Um, and uh, so we've got a good show for you. Uh, I did want to, we have, we have someone new in the wings, uh, you can't see her, but normally we have uh, Terry Caldwell Udell from our team at County 10 uh, running the uh, the comment station over there and dropping links and um, making sure that the sound is working and all of those things. But today we have our uh, Director of Office Operations, Amanda Goddard, uh, who you can't see her, but she's waving. And uh, so she's in the background. So if you do have a comment, Drop it in the, the comments below if you have a question. Uh, you just want to tell Patrick Adam he looks good. Uh, whatever you want to tell us, let us know, and uh, we'll try to get those questions answered. So, um, oh, and I almost forgot. Patrick Adam has a big announcement towards the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. So thanks for hanging out with us. Um, let's get down to it. Tell us about malware. Well, malware, we've actually did like another previous, one of our first videos kind of about malware, but it's it's bad stuff. And you don't even know you have it most of the time. Uh, it, it's, uh, let's see, what, what, what is the definition that I pulled up here? Malware is an intrusive software that is designed to damage and destroy computers and computer systems. Malware is short for malicious software. Uh, an example, uh, examples of malware include Viruses, worms, Trojan viruses, spyware, adware, botnets, spam, uh, phishing, and ransomware. So what does this do to your computer? It, it, they said computer systems because it could be anything that basically is connected to the internet. <laughs> could get it, or even um, if you're sharing USB sticks, it used to be floppy disks, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> He's dating himself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I'm losing track. Oh, yeah, 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 your computer. So usually um, uh, what, what it does to your computer is it takes advantage of it so, and somebody else benefits some way or form. So usually it's something as simple as it displays ads in the lower right-hand corner or uh, that just pop-up ads and they earn money every time one of those pop-up ads come up. They earn like 0.2 cents or something. But you distribute that over a few million people and it adds up to being a pretty good chunk of change for displaying ads. Mm -hmm. They'll do things like they'll repl replace the search bar in your web browser. So all of a sudden you have some weird search bar that you didn't even remember installing. That one drives me nuts. And it used to be that you'd get like a stack of them. You'd go, I'd go to some people's computers and they'd have like five search bars. I'm like, why do you have five search bars? <laughs> And luckily, it's always been like a cat and the mouse game where there's updates to the computers that kind of limit that and look for it. Um, so yeah, so basically what it does to your computer is it makes it slow. And it's, it, just, it just slows down the computer. It makes it slow in every way possible. Um, it, and when it's just running all the time, it'll prevent it to go, from going into sleep. It'll be generating more heat. It'll, co it'll physically cost you more money. Um, on your electric bill, because it'll always be running even when it's not supposed to be. It'll be overworked. And this also affects your internet because a lot of it is sending, uh, there's the, the spam bots that'll actually use your computer as a server to send out spam to other, other people. And where it could be a botnet where it's infecting or it could be even uh, mining cryptocurrencies. <laughs> oh. People have done that as well. So, uh, so they're just like taking advantage of your computer and making it into a little cloud node to do their own whatever they want. They can also, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, some forms of malware can uh, search your computer for passwords, uh, data mine for information that would um, uh, give them access to bank accounts. Uh, that's that. Those are pretty serious ones, but 
uh, but they can do that too, right? Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll um, they'll they'll do uh, capture keystrokes and they'll look for logins and then they'll package them up and sell them off to the highest bidder and they'll just get entered into dead databases and then all of a sudden you'll find out you have credit cards you never had before. <laughs> That's always fun. Um, so I have a question. So we, we covered this in, in the previous video, uh, which you can find uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, on County 10's YouTube channel. Um, but we, we covered kind of how malware can get on your computer through phishing scam, uh, schemes and scams and uh, spam, that type of thing. We were just talking before this that uh, um, the guy behind the camera, uh, is uh, his mother got an, uh, an email that said something about um, your Netflix account has, uh, has expired and, uh, and she was worried that, um, that she'd been paying for Netflix this whole time because she didn't have a Netflix account. Um, but had she clicked on that link or put any of the information in, um, it could have just taken a password or something, but it also could have installed malware, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, um, the worst ones are, are where they, they, they call you up on your cell phone and say they're representing somebody else. This is, this is a phishing scam but they'll get you to go onto your computer and download software and put in you know, their administration credentials for it to install. So it's kind of like a backdoor into your system. And then once it's in there, then, then they got you. And the worst part is they usually pretend like they found something, which is actually them. And then they'll, they'll hold you ransom saying that it's somebody else holding you ransom, which is just Goodness. horrible. I, this stuff is so common. I have to share this story because it's very fresh and pretty funny. Uh, malware and phishing and all of these things are so common. Um, uh, most of you out there, I'm sure, get at least one, well, depending on what email you use, it might go to spam, which is great. Um, but you probably get at least one email, probably more like 10 a day. You might get, we just got, while we were sitting here, uh, Patrick Adam got a phone call from uh, somebody trying to sell him um, a new warranty on his car. Yeah, uh, it comes about once an hour. Once an hour. Um, <laughs> Which isn't going to load malware, but they are going to take his money. Uh, but um, so it's so prevalent that sometimes now I think it's it's changing how we think about communication because I got a phone call uh, last weekend and somebody said, uh, hi, I'm so-and-so from such and such. Uh, names have been changed in order to protect the innocent. Uh, <laughs> it, I'm so-and-so from such and such accounting agency. And uh, I need to know, are you an S-Corp? And I thought, if you're my accountant, shouldn't you know whether I'm an S corp? And uh, and and she said, are you an LLC? And I said, wait a, wait a minute. She says, I, I need your EIN number. And and so I blew her off. I said, I'm not. Nobody by your name works there. Blah blah blah. I hung up the phone. And a few minutes later, I got a call from my accountant saying, Hey, why are you so mean to her? <laughs> so I didn't. It didn't even occur to me. Somebody was trying to take information, but it was legitimate. And uh, I'm just attuned Oops. to not taking, giving anyone any information whatsoever. So, so yeah, what, what can you do about it? I mean, that's why we're doing the video. So the best thing is preventative. Like, if you don't have to get it in the first place, that's the best thing. So on computers, when they ask you to set up a password or, or not set up a password, set up a password. <laughs> <laughs> and don't make it easy. Don't use something that's in the dictionary. Uh, past phrases are better than past words because they take a lot longer to look up. And of course, they always want you to have a cap, what they call a complex password, or um, where you've got a capital, a letter, a lowercase letter, number, a special character like an exclamation point or something like that. And don't, there's a lot of common things people use like your children's names and birthdays, your phone number, stuff like that. Don't use it. Anything that people can actually find out about you um, by pretty easily, don't don't. <laughs> should do a show on password managers. Yeah, that's a, actually that's a really good idea. We I'm should do write one. that down. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing that people get get into your computers is like, especially old Windows computers. You didn't have to have a, uh, an administration account on there, so literally just about any program could run and install itself. But especially Macs and the newer Windows updates and things, they they kind of force you to make an administrator account that has a password. And then you can make children's accounts and things that have, don't have passwords, but they can't install any programs. And now they ask you for your password when anything installs, unless there is a vulnerability in your system. 
And that's why you always get bombarded with updates like, oh, you need to install this Windows update. You gotta install this latest patch for this, this game or this program or, but you wanna do it. Because uh, if you don't, then you're, you're wide open and the people find these uh, back doors in and they exploit the system and you can have this happen to you uh, without knowing about it. Uh, so the other thing you can do to prevent it is a good firewall. Um, Windows has a firewall built in, it's questionable, because usually if it has a vulnerability, it's like the biggest target, so people go after it right away. Uh, a, lot of a lot of routers now are starting to be smart routers or ma managed routers that have the ability to kind of block before it even gets to the computers and it blocks it all the way in. And th those are those managed routers that we have, so you either lease them or you buy them from us. And they have that ability to pop up and let you know if you've got malware on your network or there's system vulnerabilities on certain devices. So it'll be like, oh, you have an iPhone, but it needs to be updated. So you'll, you'll, you can look at that and you can see and you can update it before you even get the malware. That's so cool. those are, those are kind of like preventative things that you can do. Um, so th those are the, what I recommend. And, uh, oh yeah, last, one last thing was how it affects your internet. When people are using those botnets and things, it slows your internet down. <laughs> and then they call them blame you. Yeah, they call them blame you. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll, they'll do, um, these things where they're, they're using your computer to send out thousands of emails or requests or um, denial of service attacks to other computer systems, which where they're just sending out a lot of connections really fast. And it, it slows your internet down immensely and it'll even get it blocked. Like they'll kick you off of um, gaming networks like the PlayStation network and the Microsoft network. And wow. uh, there's, it's, it's just really bad news. So the best thing you can do is Make sure you have all the updates run. That's like the number one thing. Uh, if somebody calls you and it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. 99% of all the big corporations do not do outgoing calls. They will not call you. Microsoft's not gonna call you. Google's not gonna call you. Um, if somebody calls and says they're from there, they're not. Netflix <laughs> is not going to call you. Netflix is not gonna call you. They're all about automation. They don't wanna hire people to go do outbound calls. Uh, yeah, so if you do get it though, what can you do to get rid of it? Uh, there's free programs. There, there's, there's of course ones that you can buy like your um, McAfee and Norton and all, all these different antiviruses. There's even the one in Windows isn't that bad anymore. There's one that comes with Windows. I can't remember what it's called. It's just like Windows Security, I think. Something like something that, like yeah. that. But it's free, and it, as long as you update that, that helps a lot. Um, I like Malware Bytes. It's free. They have a free edition. They have a paid one too that runs automatically. But the free one, you just manually run it every once in a while especially if your computer feels slow. <laughs> yeah. Or like your router or our routers give you an alert saying that you have an issue. That's something you can go and get really quick and put on your system to get rid of it. That's awesome. So um, to summarize, make sure that you are updating your passwords, um, that you're using strong passwords, that you're updating your software uh, or, or hardware, depending on what device you're using. Um, that you are not answering uh, phone calls from Microsoft saying that uh, they want to get on your computer or Google or Netflix or somebody trying to sell you anything pretty much. Uh, don't let them do it. Don't click on crazy links that you don't understand uh, in your email that you are unsolicited or from someone you don't recognize. Um, all those things are potentially going to get you in trouble. So, uh, and if you do, um, and it looks like your computer is slowing down, um, make sure to use some kind of uh, malware removal device and uh, device software like uh, like malware bytes, um, which is free and, and that's actually what I use too. So um, commercial for malware bytes. Um, <laughs> so anything else on malware? Um, I guess if you actually get into a phishing scam or a scam where they're holding you ransom ransomware, uh, they're going to say something that's probably untrue about you and to make sure that you don't try and contact the authorities. Contact the authorities. Um, if you call the local police, they'll probably have you contact the FBI. Uh, they have a division just for cybercrime, and they they know a lot about what's going on, and they can they can help you retrieve your data without paying that ransom. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so some of that ransom is really good. Um, the other thing you can do is backups. So if you if you buy a a backup 
it's just an external drive and backup every once in a while so you don't lose things or you save things into the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of different services that you can use. Uh, Carbonite's one of them. Uh, but yeah, if you back up regularly, that's probably the best thing you can do because yeah, some of those, those uh, encrypted blockouts are pretty much impossible to get your data back. Yeah, not, not a good thing. Yeah. It, it, there's no guarantee if you pay them, they can give you the data back either. So you could pay them and they, they still won't unlock it. Unreal. I mean, they're already a criminal, so what, what, <laughs> what are you going to do? That's the point. <laughs> uh, you're definitely the one that loses regardless. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you have nothing else on malware, let's move on to the big announcement. Yeah, so uh, the big announcement is we're not sitting around twiddling our thumbs. We're constantly upgrading our network, and I think we're finally at a point where we're, we're gonna we're gonna do another big upgrade for everybody that's on our wireless system. So it's gonna be slow. Uh, originally, we were gonna wait until uh, all all the the denser populated areas were on fiber optic, but um, we're doing some testing, and we're still gonna. Con do a little bit more testing to finalize it, but we're gonna see about a 4X speed increase on your plans for the, the gold and silver. So you still get whatever you're paying for, but you can potentially, depending on which tower you're connected to, get up to four times higher speeds. So they'll go, now the, the silver plan can go potentially up to 50 megabytes. So that's the $49 plan, and the gold plan will, can max out at like 90 megabytes. So we're wow. talking like four times what the current maximum was. Now, so it's not it's not guaranteed because we don't have the whole network upgraded, but there's some people that'll be able to get it right now. Like if you go check your, your speed test right now, you can get close to those speeds. That's fantastic. And, and the goal is by the end of the summer to get everybody converted over to that. So it's um, it's pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> what uh, what other projects are you guys working on? Uh, we just got Hudson up and up up and running, so we were able to get some of the areas around the outside of Hudson. Um, but now we've got a new tower up on the hill and we're able to get in town um, a lot more people. So if you've called about Hudson service before and we weren't able to do it, odds are we probably can now. We can probably get about 90% of the town. And uh, these, these will be these new speeds that I talked about because it's got the newest technology on the tower there. So you're, uh, I think people were getting DSL speeds of just a couple megabytes in a lot of locations there. So now you can get, you know, up to, up to 90. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. So, Amanda, do we have any questions? We do. So, Sean asks, when are you turning on fiber and ethity housing on Willow Street? As soon as we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just waiting on some power to come in to uh, the communication shelter. So, to be safe, March is what I'm saying. Could be sooner, could be a little bit later. Um, but. We got everybody's houses connected on Willow Street, and we got the fiber run to their houses, and it's just a matter of um, getting power and, and terminating some, some cables. So I'm hoping it's really soon. All right. We're talking weeks now, instead right. of months. <laughs> Coming soon, sooner than last time. So anybody else? All right. Oh, one more. One more. So Heather says, we live between Hudson and Lander. Do you service this area? Uh, with wireless, fixed wireless, yep. So that's always the ever popular question. So if you, if you are wondering if you can get Wind River Internet uh, wireless uh, product, um, all you need to do is call their office. Uh, and what's that number? It's 857-2004. Uh, in that, that particular area right there, we're working on putting up a new tower nearby to get better coverage. Right now we can hit the people that are closer towards Lander, um, but not at the base of the hill towards Hudson, but we're working on it. And if you call, we'll get you on a list, a callback list, and we'll kind of move it up on a priority. There's the more people that need service out that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask you questions like, <laughs> are there trees, and can you see the sun when it's up? And I, I had that conversation uh, a while back, and I, I was actually pretty interested with the questions they asked. So they'll ask you some questions, and they'll find out if, uh, if, there's, uh, if they're able to get service to you. We have another question. Yep. From Cindy, she says, is fiber optics coming to Arapahoe? Fiber optics is currently in Arapahoe. Uh, we've got about 300 homes passed in Arapahoe, uh, 
Beaver Creek Housing Project, uh, the Great Plains Housing Project, the Bengay Heights area, and we just did about another couple hundred houses passed that are gonna be lit up here very soon, uh, sooner than uh, sooner than Ipati, so like uh, in the next week or two. So there's a, there's a lot in uh, Rapa that's available right now. So Cindy, call 856-2004 and uh, ask about your house. 857, 857, 857. 857. I don't know, I'm sorry for whoever's phone number is 856. It's not 856, it's 857. I'm a winner today. What else? Anything else out there? Um, um, this is also from Heather who had asked about um, Hudson and Lander being mm -hmm. serviced. She just said Windy Heights. Mm, not, That's that area. I'm not familiar. You have to call the office and they could tell okay. you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, if, if there's nothing else and no other questions in the queue, uh, we will be back next month. I don't know what our topic is yet. but oh, I, uh, I do have a couple more announcements. Oh, please so do. Just, just, a, uh, just an update on um, areas. So like I was oh, saying, nice. yeah. uh, Hudson, we got a new tower already up and going right now. And we're hooking people up. And then... Uh, Johnstown, we're gonna be hooking up in that area next month. Uh, Pavilion, the month in April, and Kinnear, um, more more coverage. We already served that area, but there's a lot. Of, there were a lot of limitations on trees, but we were gonna have some new sites that'll allow us to get around. Um, and I had answers to March for Ethity Housing, um, and Fort Washakie Housing is gonna be the spring. So all the housing projects in Fort Washakie are gonna be hooked up, uh, weather permitting in the next next couple months here. That's great. Yeah. So everybody here is hard at work at Wind River Internet. So um, give them a call at 857-2004 and, uh, and ask about uh, products that, that they might be able to offer to you. Um, and, uh, and if you have questions about uh, malware, uh, hopefully we've answered them. And uh, do we have another question? Oh, nice. I guess ideas, if you guys have ideas on what we should cover on the show. Um, we're running out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I want to cover password managers because I was very wary of password managers, uh, and now they are my lifeblood. So uh, I think maybe we'll cover those, but we'll we'll see what comes up, and we'll let you guys know in County Ten uh, what the next topic for Tech Tips Live, which today was on Tuesday at two, also. So lots of alliteration going on and good internet. So. Um, I'm Will Hill, this is Patrick Adam, she's Amanda, he's guy behind the camera, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks.